In this video, we're going to talk about chemical shift. Chemical shift, represented by the symbol delta, is basically the ratio of the observed chemical shift, which is typically given in hertz, divided by the operating frequency of the spectrophotometer, which is typically given in megahertz. Now, to get a number between 0 and 12, you're going to have to multiply this by 10 to the 6. Now, on the x-axis, these represent chemical shift values for different signals. And the units is ppm, parts per million. Now, what we have here is a reference signal, TMS, also known as tetramethylsilane. It's basically a silicon atom with four methyl groups. On the right, we have methyl bromide. Now, notice that methyl bromide has a higher chemical shift than TMS. The reason for that is because bromine is more electronegative than silicon. Because the protons are next to an electron withdrawn group, they will have a higher chemical shift. Thus, they will appear downfield on the NMR spectrum, which is basically the left side. Upfield is towards the right side. The protons that are shielded to an external magnetic field, they will appear upfield. The ones that are deshielded will appear downfield, which is due to the presence of an electron withdrawing group. So here's a question for you. Let's compare methyl bromide with methyl chloride. So dealing with H and MR, which one will have a higher chemical shift? Would you say it's the protons in methyl bromide or the protons in methyl chloride? Because bromine is more electronegative than chlorine, methyl bromide should have a higher chemical shift than methyl chloride. So when dealing with the halogens, here's what you need to know. So methyl fluoride is going to have the highest chemical shift. And then it's going to be methyl chloride, followed by methyl bromide, followed by methyl iodide. So this is due to the inductive effect. So the proton that's attached to a carbon with a more electronegative atom attached to it is going to have the higher chemical shift. It's going to appear more downfield. Now, according to one textbook, here are the values for these compounds. So the chemical shift for methyl fluoride, that is the protons on it, it's about 4.3 ppm, or parts per million. For methyl chloride, it's 3.1. For methyl bromide, it's about 2.7. And for methyl iodide, 2.2. Now, for methane, if you want to compare that to methyl iodide, it's much less. It's going to be about... 1.0 ppm. So the presence of a halogen will greatly increase the chemical shift of these compounds. Now the next thing that we need to mention, which is obvious in nature, but it's good to see it, is that if the number of electron groups, I mean, excuse me, electron withdrawing groups increases, the chemical shift will increase as well. So in this example, we have three chlorine atoms, and the chemical shift for this proton is 7.3 ppm. Now we're going to compare it if we had two protons on this carbon instead of three. So the chemical shift for dichloromethane is about 5.3 ppm. And then let's compare that to methyl chloride. which we said was 3.1, and methane, which is about 1 ppm. So as you can see, the more halogens or the more electron withdrawn groups that you have on a carbon atom, it's going to basically pull the electrons from the carbon atom, thus making this proton deshielded towards an external magnetic field, thus increasing the chemical shift of that proton on an NMR spectrum. 
Now the next thing we need to talk about is the position of the protons relative to an electron withdrawn group in a molecule. So here we have nitropropane, or you could say one nitropropane. And there's three different types of protons. The two protons in this uh, CH2 group will generate one type of signal. And then these two protons will generate another. And then these three will generate a different signal. So in the NMR spectrum, we'll have three different signals for this molecule. Which proton will have the highest chemical shift? And which one will appear the most downfield in an NMR spectrum? Would you say it's the protons corresponding to signal A, signal B, or the ones corresponding to signal C? What would you say? Now keep in mind, the NL2 group, the nitro group, is a powerful electron withdrawn group. Now the answer is, of course, the protons nearest the electron withdrawn group. So signal A is going to have the highest chemical shift. Signal C, because it's furthest away from the nitro group, it's going to have the lowest chemical shift. So the number corresponding to this is going to be about 4.4 ppm. And for the methylene group in the middle, it's about 2.1. And for the methyl group at the end, 1.0. So the nitro group is still able to affect the protons corresponding to signal B even though it's not directly attached to that carbon. Now the methyl group that is very far away from this electron withdrawn group is not really affected as much. So as you can see, the relative position of the protons next to the electron withdrawn group has an effect. The one that are closest to the electron withdrawn group will have the highest chemical shift. The ones that are furthest away they will have the lowest chemical shift. They will appear upfield, while these will appear downfield. Now let's work on another example. This one is going to be a little more challenging than the previous examples. So here we have a molecule of butanone. Which protons will be the most deshielded? The ones corresponding to signal A, signal B, or signal C. What would you say? Feel free to pause the video and work on this. Now, the electron withdrawn group is undoubtedly the carbonyl group. And because protons C is farthest away from it, this is not going to have the highest chemical shift. In fact, it's going to have the lowest. So the battle is between signal B and signal A, both of which are equally distant from the carbonyl group. So now, which one is going to be the answer? Before we can understand which signal is going to have the highest chemical shift, we need to talk about something. What you need to know is that, let's say if we have a carbon with one hydrogen atom, so this is called a methane proton, which is attached to basically a tertiary carbon. The methane proton is going to have a higher chemical shift than a methylene proton, which is basically a CH2 group. So I'm going to write it here, methylene. The methylene protons are attached to a secondary carbon because that carbon is attached to two other carbons. And those protons will have a higher chemical shift than a methyl proton, which is basically a CH3 group. In this example, the methyl protons are attached to a primary carbon. And just to give you some numbers, methyl protons the signals are usually around 0.9 to 1.1. Now these can vary based on the molecule, but that's like a rough estimate. The methylene protons are usually about 1.2 to 1.3. The methane protons could be anywhere from 1.4 to 1.7.
But what you need to understand is that the protons attached to a tertiary carbon are more downshielded, I mean downshielded, <laughs> more downfield than the secondary ones. And that's more downfield than the protons that are attached to a primary carbon. Now the question is why? Why are the protons more downshielded when they're attached to a tertiary carbon compared to the ones that are attached to a primary carbon? And the answer has to do with the number of electron withdrawn groups. Carbon is more electronegative than hydrogen. The EN value for hydrogen is 2.1 and the electronegativity value for carbon is 2.5. So if you replace one hydrogen with a carbon atom, this carbon now has more electron withdrawn groups that are pulling electrons away from it, making this proton more deshielded to a magnetic field. And so because carbon is more electronegative than hydrogen, having three carbon atoms on this central carbon is going to have a greater deshielding effect as opposed to having just one carbon atom. And so that's why methane protons are more deshielded than methylene protons or methyl protons. So now let's compare these two protons, the methyl protons and the methylene protons. Based on what you know, which one is going to have the higher chemical shift? Now let's compare the carbon atoms. This is a methyl carbon atom which is attached to another carbon atom, so it's a primary carbon. This carbon atom is secondary. It's attached to two of the carbon atoms. And as we know, the protons that are on the secondary carbon is going to be, it's going to have a higher chemical shift than the ones in the primary carbon. So the methylene protons is going to be more deshielded than the methyl protons. So signal B should have the highest chemical shift, then it should be signal A and C should have the lowest. Now just to put some numbers to this, the methyl proton has a chemical shift of about 2.14 parts per million. The methylene protons has a chemical shift of 2.45, a little bit more than the methyl protons. And the methyl protons at the left corresponding to signal C, they have the lowest chemical shift, which is around 1.06. And so as you can see, the methylene protons has the highest chemical shift because there's more carbon atoms attached to this carbon. Now you need to know the chemical shifts of a few common functional groups. I'm not going to go over all of them because you can look it up in a textbook, but just a few. For a carboxylic acid, the proton will have a chemical shift of somewhere between 10 to 12 parts per million. Next up is the aldehyde. The aldehyde proton will have a signal somewhere usually between 9 and 10. The next one you need to know is benzene. The protons on a benzene ring, they can vary usually between 6.5 and 8.5. Now, if you have a methyl group attached to a benzene ring, it's not going to have a, the regular signal of a methyl group, which is usually around 1 ppm. But this is going to be more deshielded, and it's going to be around 2.1 to 2.3 ppm. Now, if you have a halogen represented by the letter X on a carbon with a proton, that proton can have a signal anywhere between 2 to 4.5. In the case of fluorine, it's going to be closer to the 4.5 value. In the case of iodine, it's going to be closer to, to 2, as we saw in previous examples. Next up, we have double bonds. The protons directly attached to an alkene can vary between 4.5 and 6.5. Now, the protons on an alkyne is usually around 2-ish. 
So I'm going to say somewhere between 2 and 2.5, just to give you some values on common functional groups. So don't forget to take a look at your textbook to see what the values for other functional groups are, because you may need to know them for your tests. But I'm going to stop it here. That's it for this video. And if you like it, feel free to subscribe to this channel. Thanks again for watching.